Hello and welcome. So today we'll be adding Bluetooth to an iPod Classic 4th Gen. And this is the circuit board that we'll be using today. I know that's a bit different than the circuit board we used in the iPod Classic 5th Gen video. That was the KCX BT emitter board. But the problem with that one, although it is a great board, it doesn't have any mechanism for turning the Bluetooth on and off. So I wanted to try one in this one where instead of using a switch, we could just use the uh, button. Yeah, so I got this board off of AliExpress and it has the ability to turn the board on and off just by holding the button down. So as you can see, I've got one hooked up over here. You just hold the pair button down and it turns the board on and then you can hold it down again and it'll turn the board off. And if you just click it once, it'll work as the pair button as well. Yeah, so I thought we'd use this circuit board today instead because it'd be somewhat difficult to convert the lock switch to a power switch on the iPod Classic 4th Gen. And also a lot of people like the lock switch functionality, so I wanted to show another Bluetooth mod where we do keep the lock switch. So yeah, first things first, let's bust open the iPod. As you can see, this is the same iPod that I used in my last video. So this will sort of be a continuation from the uh, 3000 mAh iPod Classic 4th Gen mod guide. And yeah, if you do plan on doing Bluetooth in an iPod Classic 4th Gen, or in any iPod pretty much, I would recommend also upgrading the battery as well. Just because the Bluetooth board's obviously going to use a little bit more battery than usual. And if you just went with the standard battery in this, it'd probably drain pretty quickly. If you haven't seen that 3000 mAh battery tutorial, I would recommend going and watching that one first. So you can get a 3000 mAh battery in your 4th gen, because it'll make this mod a lot better. First things first, we've got to figure out where we're going to mount this thing. Yeah, obviously the space with the old battery is now completely free, although the board is a little bit too wide. I think where I'm going to end up fitting it is underneath the headphone jack assembly because there is a lot of free space under there and it's just taken up by this plastic thing that's just there to fill the space pretty much. So first things first, let's just unscrew the headphone jack board assembly over here and we can remove that first. Yeah, so as you can see that just sort of pops out. Yeah, the flex cable does disconnect there as well. Those are two separate pieces. It just clips on with a uh, little connector there. So just take note of the orientation so we don't accidentally put it in backwards later when we go to reassemble the iPod. And that flex cable is taped on a little bit as well, so just be careful that you don't rip it when trying to take it out. And now we're going to have to unscrew that white plastic piece that's in there as well. And I think that's just held in with two screws. And now once we've got that out, you can see I'm just going to start removing that little piece of plastic at the bottom there. And we can file that down as well. And this will just give us room to stick that Bluetooth board underneath. Yeah, and as you can see next to the headphone jack, there is this other little weird port looking thing. I'm pretty sure that was used for microphones back in the early 2000s, or maybe some other type of accessory. Although these days, I have never seen any accessory that uses that port, and I have never personally used that port either. So what I thought we'd do is um, get our pair button to mount in that slot where that connector goes. So in order to do that, we will need to take the connector off of this little circuit board here. As you can see, it's all one sort of assembly. So in order to remove that whole section, we're going to have to desolder this metal sort of housing for the whole headphone jack assembly. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm just heating it up. Yeah, just trying to remove it with a combination of prying and using the tweezers and heating it up all at once. I am able to pull that whole shield piece off, as you can see. Even if it is somewhat fiddly, I think I just end up snipping the solder joints at the base of the connectors. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it was connected in like three or four different spots all around. And yeah, now you can see once we've gotten that off, the rest of the connectors just made up of plastic pretty much. So in order to take off that section where that old port is, I'm pretty sure I just go in, yeah, I use a box cutter blade and sort of separate it in half. And then just using the pliers, I sort of just go in there and chop off all the parts that I don't want. Obviously, you've got to be pretty careful while doing this. You don't want to damage anything else on this circuit board because all of this stuff is pretty important. And if you damage the wrong component, you'll probably get no audio or maybe the lock switch won't work. But I pretty much just got it to a state where it was just flush with that side there. So I removed all the plastic that was sticking out for that second connector. And then, yeah, there was a bit left over of all the pins for that connector as well. So I just got my soldering iron out and made all those pads somewhat flush. Yeah, and after I did that, now just getting out the isopropyl alcohol and giving everything a bit of a spray down. 
and just cleaning it up with the cotton bud. Yeah, now we'll just wire up our three wires for the uh, audio signal and these will just run straight into the Bluetooth board. So we're going to need one for right channel, one for the left channel and one for the ground wire. And if you don't know how to find which one's which, I'll put a pin out up on the screen. But yeah, if you needed to figure out which one's which, what you could do is you could just Google pin out of a 3.5mm headphone jack and then you'd find this sort of image and you'd be able to see which pin does what. You'd have to look on the inside of the connector to see where those wires all go to, but yeah, that's how I figured it out at least, just by searching up the 3.5mm headphone jack diagram. And yeah, we can just put these on one by one. And I ran the wires pretty long because I wasn't sure how this would all fit back together as well. So, yeah, I wanted to give myself a bit of room to work with there. Yeah, so pretty much as you can see with this board we're using here, this is the board out of an external Bluetooth sort of 3.5mm headphone jack adapter. Either what you could do is you could either just buy an external Bluetooth 3.5mm headphone jack adapter or I got this board separately. But either way will work, you'll get a similar sort of thing. This board, it uses a very similar chip to the one that's on the KCX BT emitter. So functionality wise, it will be very similar, although it's just got that extra circuit built in for powering on and off. It's also got a switch on it as well, which can switch between the Bluetooth receive and Bluetooth send. So if you were to use this in a speaker, for instance, you'd be able to receive the audio signal instead of send it. And the KCX BT emitter does have that functionality as well, although you have to solder an extra thing to get it to do that. So what I want to do here now with this board is I want to remove all the components that we're not actually going to need in this mod. And those include the headphone jack, the button, and I'm pretty sure I end up removing the little charging port there as well. We'll just wire it to the same battery as the uh, one that's in the iPod. And yeah, as you can see, we've got our left, right and ground wires hooked up there. And now we've got to run another two to go to the battery. Yeah, so all the pads that we need to wire to are pretty much labeled on the board. It'll say bat plus and bat minus. And then it'll say L, R, and G for the headphone jack as well. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you can also just copy what I'm doing in the video here as well. And yeah, so now we've got our positive and our negative wires attached for the battery. There's just two more wires that we need to run here as well. And those will be the two wires that go to the pair button and the power button in this case as well. I just used some green wires and then just hooked those up where the button used to be. And yeah, as you can see, the whole board was just covered in flux at this stage. So what I did was I just sprayed the whole thing with isopropyl alcohol and gave it a big wipe down. And now we just got to reinstall this all back in the rear housing. First things first, I put down a layer of Captain Tape, just because we've got that Bluetooth board that's going to be sitting there now. And you don't want it to short out on the rear housing. So just putting down the Captain Tape to prevent that. And now we can screw back in that white plastic piece if we haven't done that already. And now we can screw our um, headphone jack assembly back in there and make sure to line up the lock switch flex as well. Oh yeah, I ended up having to remove those two gold coloured grounding sort of posts as well in order to get the Bluetooth board to fit back in there properly. I'm sure they do something, but they don't do much, so you can take those out without worrying about anything. It's not really going to change how the iPod functions, to be honest. And yeah, now we're going to have to hook um, these two wires up to the battery so we can get power to the Bluetooth circuit board. So yeah, as you can see, we're using this 3000 mAh aftermarket battery that we made in the last video. But if you had another battery, it would work in a very similar sort of process. You want to just wire the red wire to your positive and the black wire to your negative. Yeah, but if you are going to do this mod, I would recommend doing the 3000 mAh battery mod as well, as I had mentioned earlier in the video. So just exposing the ends of your wires there, and then we can solder those on and just seal your battery back up. Yeah, and at this stage we can do a little bit of a test. Yeah, if we just grab those two green wires and bridge them together, we can test if the Bluetooth board powers on and works. And as you can see, we've got that red light starting up there, and then it starts blinking to indicate that it's in pair mode. And then to turn it off, we can just hold the two wires back together again. But before we fully test this, we're going to have to figure out a solution for our on-off button. So that's what I'm going to do next. I just grabbed a bunch of different buttons and sort of just tested how they would fit in there. The one I first tested was the one that came with it. And then I tested one of the buttons that comes off the KCX BT emitter. Although the button I ended up going with was one of these little shoulder buttons from a Nintendo DSi. As these are sort of 90 degree buttons. I thought it'd just be a lot easier to mount. So yeah. Yeah, and although you could just super glue a button in there, that would look pretty ugly. So what I decided to do is 3D print 
a little uh, button piece and then we could mount the actual switch behind it. So yeah, over to the uh, computer now. As you can see, I've designed this one in um, FreeCAD over here, which is a very frustrating piece of software that breaks every five minutes. If you've ever tried to use it, you'll know what I mean. If you have to make any sort of adjustment, the whole thing just crashes and you pretty much have to start again. Save that and then export it and then come over and print it on our 3D printer here. Yeah, since this is such a small piece, it doesn't take very long at all to print. Now just test fitting if that actually works in the iPod. As you can see, it fits pretty much perfectly. So yeah, I'm just uh, giving that whole area behind it a bit of a clean with more isopropyl alcohol. Because that's where I'm going to mount my little switch. Yeah, so as I said, I ended up going with one of these ones from a Nintendo DSi. And what I did was I just got some super glue and super glued all over the bottom. Being very careful not to get any glue in the button mechanism itself. And then I just held that into place. Yeah, that button can be activated just by pushing in the piece that we just 3D printed there. It works pretty nicely. I could have made the 3D printed piece a little bit wider, I guess. But I'd rather it be a little bit loose than a little bit tight. And yeah, now we just got to solder on those green wires there, making sure to get them on the correct positions, which ended up being the middle and the side. Yeah, and a lot of these buttons, they have three sort of solder pads on them. And one of those pads will be sending a signal when it's pushed in, and another one when it's sending the signal when it's not being pushed. So just figure out which one you need to use there. Now we can plug this into the iPod and give it all a test. So first things first, just plugging that battery in. And now just installing our SD card here, plugging in the headphone jack flex, and now we can boot up the iPod. Oh yeah, and another thing about this iPod, if you don't have the headphone jack assembly plugged in, the lock switch is going to default to the locked position. Yeah, and that's another reason why we couldn't convert the lock switch to a power switch on this one. Because if we were to do that, then the iPod wouldn't be usable at all. It would just always be in the locked position. Hence why we couldn't use the KCX BT emitter in this mod. But now to just pair our headphones and give it a test. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you can hear it, but upon pairing the earphones, you can hear there's a very annoying buzzing sort of sound coming out of the speakers. It's pretty much just unlistenable. When I put them in, it's just the constant background noise there. Sort of like an electrical sort of sound. And that's the sound that's not really present on the KCX BT emitter. And I'm pretty sure the reason it's present is because both the power and the ground rails on this Bluetooth board are connected. Whereas on the KCX BT emitter, they're wired up in a way where the ground rail for the battery for like the power and the ground signal for the headphone jack, they're on sort of separate circuits. So it just doesn't have that background noise when you power the thing off the same battery. If we were to power this thing up off of two different batteries, that noise would not be present. But since we want to do this as one internal mod, it's only one battery, because that's just a lot more convenient for having one device with Bluetooth built in. We needed to come up with a solution where we could fix that background noise and get it powered off of the same battery at the same time. Well, first things first, I spent like an hour fiddling around with the iPod, just trying to solder extra wires on, on the battery to the ground on the headphone jack. Just all these other, everything I could think of to try and fix that buzzing sound, but nothing seemed to work. And after a bit of research online, what I found I needed was one of these DC to DC isolator circuits. So I went onto AliExpress and I ordered one of these and waited about a month, put the project on hold, waited for it to come in the mail, forgot about the project for another two weeks. And then finally, once I finished all my orders, got around to finishing this mod off. Now we're back, we've got a completely different camera this time, and now we can finish the mod off. First things first, I have to figure out the pin out. I think I just found the uh, data sheet for the thing, and then I tested it on a breadboard to see if that was correct, and it was. So yeah, now we've got to hook up the uh, positive and negative leads to the battery, like what I've done here. And I used some heat shrink on these as well, just to cover up the solder joints. And now we can solder on the positive and negative leads that go to the Bluetooth board. Now we had to figure out a position to mount that before we sealed it all back up. And it ended up fitting in there below the uh, SD card reader pretty well, so that was alright. I think I ended up using some double sided tape to sort of fix it in the position there. And then just adhering that down. And now before I sealed it back up I decided to give it another test. And honestly the noise was still somewhat present, although it was much quieter. It was now at a somewhat bearable level. Like, you could listen to this. 
although it is worse than on the classic 5th gen mod, it's still definitely listenable. So I'll try to demonstrate it here. It seems to be more audible at the low volumes as well. Not only does the higher volume drain it out, the noise sort of goes down as well. So yeah, it's a lot more listenable at the higher volumes. Yeah, I thought it'd be easy to demonstrate that background noise with my Bluetooth speaker. So I just paired the iPod to my speaker here and here's a demo of it. So as you can hear, there is a little bit of background noise, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the wired audio compared to the Bluetooth. As you can hear, the background noise goes away. Yeah, so overall, this Bluetooth mod was probably not as good as the one I did in the 5th gen, just because of that slight background noise. So I might end up doing this again, but with the KC BT emitter, and then I'll have to figure out some other sort of solution to turn the power on and off. I think it's called a latching switch circuit. I might end up trying to build my own and then using that for the on-off power. I watched a video on it by EEV blog. He seemed to talk about it as if it was a simple circuit, but to me that looks extremely complicated. So we'll see if I can figure out how to build one of those and then integrate that into our Bluetooth mod here. But yeah, another thing I'll say about this Bluetooth board is um, the built-in antenna seems to have quite good range as well, especially compared to the other Bluetooth board. The range on this one is sort of similar to the KCX BT emitter with the antenna plugged in. So that's another positive about using this board, I guess. Yeah, so you could use this board in the classic 5th, 6th and 7th gen as well if you wanted to go for a solution that retained the lock switch. Although, again, you'll just have that background noise. And I'm pretty sure that's only going to fit in the thick version as well. Just because of how much bigger it is compared to the uh, KCX BT emitter. Yeah, if you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. If you want to try this mod yourself, I have all the parts linked in the description. You can buy them either off of AliExpress, which will be the cheapest, or off me if you want to support me and my business. Check out my website. I sell a bunch of different iPods and iPod parts, and I also offer a mail-in repair service as well if you want to get one of your old iPods fixed. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. See you next time, and bye.